So let's continue. Yeah, it doesn't have to be like an actual like entire thing. We can go back to the temple. What place was that that we were at before? That was the second temple. Which one uh, is that one? That was the the, the temple of the J Temple yes. of uh, Rebirth and the cycles okay. of life and nature. The one that Calico is having issues with. Yeah, it sounds like he has a personal beef there. I butchered his name, didn't I? Comac. Comac, oh. sorry. Or Cormac for us too. Okay. Um. Yeah. So, Ashkarol makes a bit of a show here. Not being a local from the city, he doesn't realize quite how populated the slums are. And as he's, you know, trying to be discreet and like bury this thing here, he just kind of. You got a like, decent perception check there, right? You did. Uh, blind sight. You do. So I guess you, you know, you were, you entered an area, you thought that, you know, people were inside their homes or they wouldn't be able to hear or see you or they wouldn't, you know, be especially interested. But um, you just, you know, turned over a brick here and made a pretty loud crack and you thought people would just mind their own business, but actually it attracts a lot of eyes. In that case, I'll probably uh, pick up the Weatherstone and, hmm not bury it here since it's too conspicuous okay you you try to find you know another place i i threw your tokens just on a random part of the map but you could try to find one of these narrow alleyways or something that you think would be more secluded or would give you a bit more are there any uh public wells in the city there are a few yes most of them are in and around the gardens Okay, well, when I walk past one of the wells, I will uh, drop my stone in the well. Okay. Okay, you could do that. You could also give me a slider pan check to uh, not be seen doing that. Not bad. Turns out the lawful good monk is actually quite um sneaky <laughs> when he wants to be okay so um other that one that sucks i kind of want to go back and like shape the stone to be back to where it was but only when nobody's looking but i don't know that might make it worse <laughs> hmm I'll try to, like, play it off, I guess, as, like, I, like, stub my toe or something. Sure. Sure. So you could maybe make a bluff check to try to play it off then. Sure. Not too bad. Actually, the ring is messed up. All right. So yeah, most of the people here go back to their own business. They probably see strange stuff all the time, but you can tell that a lot of people are kind of on high alert that they are, you know, expecting or, you know, afraid of a battle or something happening pretty much at any moment. Um, the, I guess as you're venturing over here, you could try to find like a better spot for this or a better place to um, store your stone. Aerodaver doesn't believe that anyone like saw like there's obviously some people who noticed that he threw something in the well, but they probably have no real clue what. Um, but you know, it seems or really like... care. Yeah, they may or may not care. I mean, it is their drinking water, so everybody has an opinion. But you know, things fall in all the time. You, I, with that slider pan check, you probably try to make it look like a an accident then. Well, I can also walk by and just look into the well, and while I've got my hands in the well, let go of it. Right. I heard something really disturbing recently um, about the uh, reservoir in L.A. They have an open pit reservoir that is after the uh, treatment plant. So, like, <laughs> birds and stuff swim and shit in the water. And then it's pumped directly into the water pipe. 
How lovely. Yeah, that's... I guess that's LA. Top tier design. All right. I guess when you have a city of that size and no real way to house water, it's not possible. Like, most reservoirs are underground. You just build a giant tank, but for yeah. millions of people that's not really functional and i'm from toronto so we have an entire lake just sitting there we just pump it out when we need it <laughs> we do it the other way we store it in the lake which is free and then pump it out and treat it and ship it to everyone yeah <sighs> okay so um getting back on track here you guys are maybe kind of moving through the slums you see all sorts of cd types um, there appears to be a black market here. People are buying and trading various things, including like weapons and armor from your armies, from the coalition, um, and like, you know, seals of office, like various um, bits and pieces from the war, but also like other illicit goods from further afield. You can see that it appears that there are some crates here that they likely stole from their own army that, um, you know, have sort of been unpackaged and, and brought up. Um, as um, you're kind of looking around, you're getting a few looks yourselves, you, your disguises are not necessarily matching the locals of this area, but um, you guys could I make would fit in pretty well, you wouldn't I? Around for what you want them. Would I not fit in as like a refugee peasant kind of guy? You probably do. You're probably the best disguise for this, but like you don't see That's any other to... soldiers here, for example. Sorry, I don't see any what? Soldiers, sorry. So, like, those of you in soldier, more soldierly disguises don't really match up. Oh, okay. Why are we um, in slums again? Well, Traveling to the other temples, right? Yeah, so we can say this is on the way to the other temple that the Ashkeval would wanted to try to find an opportunity to bury the his particular weather zone. I assume there's a more mainstream route to get to the temple? There is, yeah. So, so I don't cause a distraction since I am in a soldier outfit. Um, I won't really fit in the slum, so I'm gonna go the mainstream route. Okay. So say you're not here right at the moment. Okay. Um, do they still have? Do they have the uh, food issue here that um, we had in game three? They do. So, the people here are. Um, you can see that, like, mostly they're selling these items and buying food. So, uh, so if someone pretty... was to suddenly create a bunch of food and water, um, that would be an yeah. excellent distraction for some scrawny little gnome to do some sneaking around. Potentially, yes. I could actually create food and water. Can you do that too, anything? Yeah, I can do it. Um, I was just wondering if there's something that Dranik might want to do in that uh, situation. Is there something that Dranik might want to do in this situation? Well, there's all kinds of black market stuff going on here. You might be able to get some intel, something that we might be able to use. Shifty you know? We what was that? I thought we were going to the temple. Yeah, but this is an opportunity to, gra to gather in intel. I just thought you might be interested in it. If you're not, then it's not a big deal. Oh, let's just go to the temple. I mean, we got to meet Leonidas there, so. Fair enough. Yeah, this isn't really with us at the moment. Yeah, I mean, you guys can take your time. Like, he, he's not running over there, so, yeah. I mean, it's probably not best we go as a group in there. So, I mean, there, there's, yeah, you guys can do your thing. You don't have to worry about me. Unless you want to meet up anyway, in which case, sure, by all means, come on. I'm not really sure exactly how Dranik would go about getting information from a black market with the destruction. I guess we can just go straight to the temple then. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Well, maybe like Eridavar creates enough food and water to create a momentary distraction enough for Ashkeval to bury the stone and then that's it. And then you guys continue on. Does that sound about right? Sure. Okay. As um, you guys are kind of making your way through the market, um, 
you guys um, suddenly kind of make out the appearance of a taller figure in the crowd, one that sort of like looks like he was kneeling down and then it stands up to full height, um, like over seven feet tall. Which one is it? So most of these creatures look quite similar, but you guys will recognize um, one of the creatures that you had seen previously. Oh, is that the assassin? Yes. So the Rajah reveals itself to you. Um, notably, as it has revealed itself to you, you can see it sort of staying there cloaked, but the other people seem to not notice it um, passing by it as though it were any other commoner or um, local thug. Mm. I just walk up and say, well, you're a tall boy. Probably shouldn't be talking in, like, the open, I guess. We should probably go to a more secluded area if we're going to talk to the Rajah. Hmm. The Rajah will slowly lead you over to the shadowy portion. It will say, um, I'm not accustomed to standing. It's fine with me if you kneel. Or sit. You can also sit. So, the Rachel does press down, down, down here to get a bit more comfortable. It says, um, you have done well infiltrating the city, better than we expected, but um, you must not draw too much attention to yourselves. I'm trying. It seems so far that you have succeeded, but be wary of Blade Bow. Even our defenses are not enough if we approach her too recklessly. Do you have a plan for Lady Bo? Our plan for Lady Bo is to show her a future that she cannot deny. Hmm. Interesting. However, however, there are other parts of our plan which have gone astray. There was a particular package that we had planted in Yuan Shu's armed forces that was intended to arrive here in the black market. It appears that the package was intercepted Would you happen to know anything about a missing bog heart? Well, yes. I was wondering about that, actually. Um, hmm. Yes, the bog heart is in, well, the possession of one of our allies. Hmm. Without the bog heart, it will be very difficult to execute the Yuan clan. Hmm. Interesting. It might be possible for us to obtain it, but it might take a bit of, a bit of time. I'm not sure if time is on our side at the moment. Hmm. Could you obtain it within the next three days? It's not impossible. It should be doable, I think, yes. Hmm. Then we shall make arrangements to meet here in three days' time. You will provide us with the bog heart which we will use against the Yuan clan. Do beat. However, 
it may not be possible for us to move against Yuan Shu himself directly. What is your mission, your goal in this place? I assume that you are um, providing intelligence to the coalition. Intelligence, yes. But we're also just here to try to mess things up as much as possible. The coalition will also be on its way here. Hmm. Yes, as a Raja sort of looks up at the clouds briefly. Given that, that um, events are now coming into motion, I would advise you to um, take care. And when we next meet, um, I will give you further instruction. Or rather, we will give you further instruction. Understood. But do you have any tips for us in the meanwhile, besides staying safe, of course? Like, any ways to avoid detection or places to stay? Or secret ways safe. into the palace. Hmm. The Forbidden City is the most defended part, um, defended by both magic and the extraordinary skill of their warriors, scouts, and mages. I would advise not approaching the Forbidden City for now, but there are a variety of residences in which you could um, take up, or slums that you could seek here. There are the occasional um, homes as well. If necessary, I could recommend a few places that would be safe for you to rest. But mm, I'm sort of thinking out of character now that if he gets captured, then he'll also know our location, and that would be terrible in like a war scenario. Yeah, but we could get that information and then use it to our advantage. I suppose. You guys can take over. Like, they'll just let me be the only person talking. I ask him about these uh, safe locations. All right. He explains that um, there are a number of inns throughout the city, some which serve the um, those seedier types that uh, want discretion more than service. Um, it could also recommend that um, there are certain places, for example, in the gardens where you could reasonably keep out of sight um, if you were clever enough in your disguises. Or in the industrial district, there are certain factories which um, are largely automated in which case you could rest there um, with, uh, in, if you want a more unconventional location. What will happen if we cannot procure the bog heart? If you cannot procure, procure the bog heart in time, then um, the Reja will have to um, devote more attention and time to the elimination of the Yuan clan and the advisors that attempted to frame the Reja. It may mean that they will not have the resources to go after Yuan Shu directly. Okay, when he's talking about wiping out the Yuan clan, uh, he's talking about like killing everyone in his family. Yes. And why is he talking about this? Because the Yuan Shu and his clan is the ones who like pretended as if the Reja were the ones who killed, or uh, sorry, it's tried to assassinate San Soibo when it was secretly the Oni. So the Reja were the ones who were basically framed by Yuan Shu and Vorderang working together with the Oni. No, I, I understand that part. Um, why is it the whole clan being wiped out as opposed to just the leader? Well, because Yuan Shu is a fucking asshole. 
Well, part of it is you want to choose an asshole. Part of it is the Rachel want to send us very strong message here that you do not fuck with them. You do not train them for these sorts of things. When they want to kill somebody, they kill them and they have a perfect record of doing so, which is partly why they're insistent on having all their tools at their disposal. That's probably why they have a bot, why they knew about the bug heart then. I was wondering why that bog heart. Oh, I'm not sure if you guys realize this, but in our group, we found a bog heart um, when we were basically doing some behind the scenes exploration uh, at uh, Dragon's Edge. Uh, so, over really at the farms that are surrounding Dragon's Edge is where we found it. Um, it's currently in the possession of Abaddon. We used it to poison the river at. Dragon's Edge, and that way, when the river dam broke, basically it broke with poisoned river water, and the Bogkar poison is like pretty fucking serious shit. So, like, it's like very, very super strong. So it's even capable of destroying, like, damaging like monuments and like actual like things like that of that nature. So, right. yeah, it's now, currently in the possession of Abaddon. Um, so Abaddon had said that he had left it in Long Beyond, like allowed it to flow down the river to no, the city. He very specifically said that he picked it up. Oh, did he? Okay. Yeah. I, last I remember he had left it in the city of Long Beyond. Okay. Well if he still has it, um he knows he can't store it safely, right? That like it's he had it in like this dimensional pocket or something like that. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Are we sure that's what he did? Uh, if I'm pretty sure that was there. Slevin, I, I do remember specifically that the dragon in the water told us we had to take it away. Yeah, yeah. the dragon specifically uh, told us we can't keep it there. Okay. And okay, so that okay. was our deal with the dragon was that he could go ahead and warn people, and we would have to take the bog heart back. Okay, that makes sense. I had forgotten this. So. Then Abaddon has it, but then he's keeping it in a portable. Okay. Well, hmm. If you explain any of this to the Raisha, the Raisha would warn you strongly to not place the bog heart in an extra dimensional space. But, um. Too late. Yeah, it's, it's like too late now. So it sounds like what happened is, is that the Raisha intentionally planted the bog heart sort of behind enemy lines with the intention of having it, like picking it up here in the city to carry out their plans. You guys just happen to intercept it in route. So it sounds like. So did we just like poison the entire universe, like the multiverse by putting it in the neutral <laughs> pocket? It just started spreading into every dimensional pocket everywhere? Throughout yeah, the entire that's... veil? Yeah, that'd be pretty scary. I, you're not sure exactly what the implication is here, but I suppose you could roll a check, like a Knowledge Arcana or the plane. No, I just want to be hilarious. Like, we sure, inadvertently yeah, sure. destroyed the world. Oops, my bad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you could also press the Rage to tell you exactly what the issue with that would be. But uh... I don't want to know what the issue with that would be. I only rolled the 17. Ooh, maybe Mad King abdomen now. Mm. You know what? I guess if he's going to mention it, I will ask, and I will roll an arcane knowledge, I guess. Sure. Nice. All right. Okay. So you, okay. So you and um, Ashkaval and Aerodiver are sort of like talking amongst yourselves, trying to kind of put it together. Maybe you're each contributing a small piece to the whole of this puzzle. But as you're talking to the Raisha, you kind of come to understand that the taint that is let out by these bog hearts is not actually stopped by planar boundaries and. So if it's in an extra dimensional space, that extra dimensional space is still adjacent to the material world. And you know, for all intents and purposes, that means you're still relatively close to the bog heart. Um, 
in terms of like absolute distance. So that likely means that Abaddon is being corrupted by the Barkhart. And um, when you Military press... Bases. Yeah. When you press um, the Reja, the Reja will say that the placing the Barkhart outside of the material world attracts attention. And with your knowledges combined, Drenic will realize what it's talking about is that uh, the Boghards are not likely from the, like, the material world, the material plane. They're probably from some extra planar source and attracting attention likely means attracting attention from the, the plane of its origin, which you surmise from like these descriptions is the far realm. Aberrations. Yeah. Mm. But yeah. When we get the opportunity, I try to get in contact with Abaddon, I guess. Okay. See what he thinks about all this. Okay. He just wants to so, eat your brains. Yeah. I mean, Abaddon is probably like, you know, I'm fine. It's not a problem. I'm a dead, remember? In this form, anyway. But then, yeah. Like, but then you're like, wait, but your other forms are not undead, and it doesn't care about planar boundaries, so. Ew. Yeah, that affects all your forms, then. Yeah. We just create a new bag. Maybe. Big bag of evil guy? I mean, isn't that what he was before? Yeah, it kind of is. Okay, but I guess with that, then, you know, you guys have been warned. You've made arrangements to meet back up with the Rachel before you finally go through with your plan. So let's just move forward to the temple since you were on your way there. We'll say that you guys have an opportunity to meet back with Leonidas to discuss the situation with him. And um, by the time you guys do get to the temple, um, this one does currently have a dragon inside, which um, apparently is sort of just uh, kicking its tail in the pool um, that is swirling at the center of this temple. Um, the dragon might um, look up as, um, um, as you all approach. Um, she just sort of smile here and uh, look around at the other people in the temple as well. Some of which appear to be um, statues made of jade or animated constructs that are marching here and there. Steve, this is the one of rebirth, right? Yeah. Reincarnation. What are the constructs doing here? Defending. Yeah, sure. Inside, they're defending? You think they could be security, or you're not sure if they serve some other role? Remember that the um, constructs you guys had met on the dam were had a religious significance. You imagine it's something like that. Mm. Um, the significance of the constructs you met on the dam? That um, they were like guardians of the dam, and that you know, for yeah. safety and well-being, people had prayed to them. So. You know, if these are guardians of the cycle, then, you know, maybe you pray to these when you want to be reborn into a better, a better life. So what's their proper way to pray here? Like, what's going on? Like, you just flicking the water? Um, she is, yes. You gather from the overall appearance that this is a, a female dragon. Okay. Was she flicking in, like, boredom, nervousness, anxiety, like something's weighing on her? I guess that'd be a sense motive. Yeah, you can make a sense motive. It's the water, the cycle, and she's attempting to maintain the cycle, and if she stops flicking it, then everybody stops the cycle of reincarnation. Uh, 21. Is she good? I believe she is good. Whoa, Mentally? plus two. I think the first All time right. that's come up. Yeah, that's pretty good. So, um... So you know that um, by reputation, this is the dragon of the West Wind, or um, sort of the western side of the Eastern Kingdom. 
Um, she, by reputation, you've heard that Fen Shi Long is um, a creature that supports the natural world and the natural order, um, that uh, she supports things like the cycle of life and reincarnation, and that she is generally opposed to civilization and the sort of traditional human hierarchies or mortal hierarchies, I should say. Interesting that she would be here in the city defending it. Right. So you, it makes you wonder what she's doing here or why. So with your sense motive check, you realize that she is feeling a little bit out of place, that, you know, this temple might be the closest that she could feel between this and probably the parks where you imagine she spends most of the rest of her time. But um, it's clear that she's sort of contemplating or thinking about what um, the cycle has in store for her or for these people that she would prefer to not be here and not be doing this, but um, whatever reason she feels compelled, at least for now. Um, with that sense motor check, I think you realize that she feels compelled because she has that respect for the eldest dragon, Wenchen Tianlong. And basically, of all the dragons that are here, she's the one that's most reluctant or least believes in the same cause as Wenchen Tianlong. Phonetic question, what does Long and Hong mean? Long means dragon. It's basically the word for dragon. Oh, okay. That's why it keeps coming up. Okay. And what was Hong then in Kishi Hong? Or Hong Kishi? Hong Kishi. Um, let me look that up. As I recall, it was a it was part of her title. So she was named um the character was actually Arthurian. It was inspired by the Red Knight. So then Sorry, let me look up the Chinese name. Then. Um, so that Hong, I think, is a type of honorary title. Like it's, it sort of means something like the. It's either like Red Knight or the Lord of something. Um, sometimes Hong is used as a moniker, which is in Hong Kong, to denote like a sort of a city or a place. I'll get you that as soon as this sheet loads, but until then. No worries. I was just curious. It's not relevant to the game. I, I just, in English, Long and Hong uh, sound the same. So I thought maybe that that was like one meant sir and one meant ma'am or something like that. No, no. No, it's definitely not that. It seems like everybody has a name that is unique and then a prefix or suffix that is uh, common in many other names. Yeah, it's part of it here is I, I kept the long in the names for the dragons here because I, most Chinese dragons do keep the long in their name, like when they're referenced, but also just to illustrate that a lot of these dragons share like a certain kinship with each other. Um, in other cases where characters have the same first like name that is usually their surname so like in the sun family for example they're, they're all sun first because that is their surname um basically so um that comes up with a few other characters as well like i think i've explained this before but um the Malion has a sister um that you guys have encountered um for the in the uh eastern coalition and so the two of them occasionally will you'll see them together or they'll be talking amongst each other etc so the hong yeah so the hong is basically just part of the uh the red knight the hong just means red Okay, so, so Hong um, Kong is like the red city? No, it's different because it's a different tone for that. I was confusing it. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, I don't think it's the red city. It might have been... Have me curious now. No, I didn't I mean recall. to get into it. I just... 
because I don't know much about Asian culture, when I see things that correlate to English, it makes me think about what that would mean in English language, but it's completely different frame of reference. It could mean absolutely nothing. Huh? It means red. What does kishi mean? Uh, so? Kishi basically means night, so it's a red yeah. night. It's nice um, and... Yeah. So, let's hear. Yeah, you're right. So it is basically red torrent. Um, or sometimes uh, different. Ver there's different beliefs of the exact etymology, but it sounds like, yeah, it could be fragrant or harbor, incense harbor, or something like red torrent as possible origins of the name home. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> Should you learn playing D and D? Yeah, yeah. All right. So, um, yeah. So I like I tried to have all of the names um, derived from the actual language, so they they do all mean something, and many of them are like the um, the dragon you guys mentioned before, Ao King Long, is like the that's the actual name of the eastern dragon of like Chinese mythology. So like a lot of these are taken pretty directly from the mythology. But, um, I think Fenji Long is more original. So, and that's this dragon. Yes, so this dragon, Fenji Long, the dragon of the west wind. Um, so you get the impression that she's not really happy here, or she's not really, you know, like, really satisfied to be working for Yuan Shu and doing this sort of protecting the city and all that. She's pretty bored. Okay, does she seem approachable? Um, somewhat. She's... Like, as I said, she smiles maybe as you enter and seeing as there's not like a ton of other people around here and, you know, most of the people that are here are too scared to like approach and talk to her. If you guys show any willingness to do that, she'll probably start hitting you up. Okay. Um, she looks kind of phased. Is there any way of telling if she has like a nature like portfolio or connection? You think she does. Um, and you do think there is probably some element of faith magic here as well okay um i will approach her and uh ask her what she's doing in the water she says oh i just wanted to put some turbulence into the cycle and you see she flicks her tail a little little bit as you look into the water, you realize that there's there's almost like small glittering um, magic in the water, maybe corresponding to something. And as she flicks it, um, different sort of motes of light will pass through the water in a different way. Some moving closer to the inner portion of the sort of the whirlpool, others towards the edge, colliding with other lights here or there. Um, you gather it's a metaphor for her disrupting the natural flow of the cycle of life. And why would she disrupt the natural flow of the cycle of life? Is that what she's actually doing? Or is she just like... I think facetious? it's a metaphor. I just, like, when I'm yeah. doing something chaotic, it's I generally have a reason why I'm doing it. I was just wondering, as this is the place where the cycle of life is significant, and she's coming here and basically playing in the water in a way that would be... I would interpret as being disruptive to the uh, the church in, on its whole. Like maybe there's no one here right. willing to challenge her on it, but that sounds like a di disruptive thing to do. And she seems right. to be doing it intentionally. Yep. And that's just where she has priority, I guess. And it's like the priest of this area. Well, um, I mean, your understanding is that none of the dragons hold rank within the temples of the church, like the, these temples either. But that said, you know, Novi is challenging her on this. And, you know, reading the room, you can see that maybe some of the priests or others are a little bit, you know, feeling anxious about this. But her playing in the water here and the metaphor of disrupting it tells you a bit about what's on her mind. So continuing with your success on the sense motive check, you gather that she is basically contemplating whether or not she should uh, rock the boat in a sense. Sounds like a potential ally. Yeah, I'm thinking uh, 
something similar. Um, this is probably not the best choice, but uh, I will stick my uh, sandal in the water and uh, disrupt the water as well. All right. That does create a few shocks from those around, and she'll sort of say, uh, ah, fellow dabbler. <laughs> Hmm. So strange as she watches one, you know, she takes, uh, places her attention on one particular speck um, that kicked off from like the edge of your sandal here as she's watching it around. As she sees the speck start to swirl around the pool, um, you can observe it as well, but it knocks into many, many other moats and knocks them off course as well. She sort of looks up surprised and looks at you a bit more carefully now. Okay, well, I will pull down my hood, and there's nothing really distinct about my face and my head, but uh, mm -hmm. at least she can clearly see me. And uh, I just ask her uh, why she's here instead of uh, tending to her duties. She says, oh, duty this, duty that. I was told that this was where my duty lies. Yet, I do not love this place. These people are nice enough, but, well, I wish that I could go back to my home, that I could venture in the rivers and streams, fly on the wind and cultivate um, my gardens. Instead, I am left here to tend to this pile of rock. This corrupt pile of rock. Hmm. Isn't all artifice of man corrupt in that way? The rocks were so much better in their natural form. This jade took millions of years to form. It took only a few short years to be ripped from its mother and placed in this ornamentation. That's an interesting perspective. I was thinking more in a uh, moral concern of uh, corruption, the corruption that's come to this city. Hmm. Yes, well. It's hard to place exactly where the corruption began. Was it the Emperor Utherling Lea, his attempts to join with, or, or his lax in his duties that allowed Vorderang and the members of the Frenic Sages to insert themselves into power? Or was it the shattering that came after? Or was it yet further the Dong Zhou and his forces. Maybe you could say that Yuan Shu planted the seed, and his alliance with the Ying Di and the Shadowlands just continues the trend. What she, what is the Dong Zhou? Dong Zhou was a half fiend, um, basically the Lord of the Shadowlands that first tried to take power after the Shattering. So this so you like the first person that Li Bu like was a. Uh like Libu's father or something that he betrayed? Yeah, so he was actually Libu's third foster father, but the last one he betrayed that really gave him a name for betrayal. Um, but he, Libu was the one who killed Dongjo. Perhaps we should cut out some of this corruption. Hmm. You're the ones that are speaking in public. Yep. <laughs> she says, um... Corruption um, grows until it consumes itself, and then it fades once again. The cycle moves on. The ashen forests give rise to new seedlings, and new life takes its place. But it is such a bother to wait for this civilization to implode upon itself. She shakes her head. She says, though I could hardly wish for the corruption to move any faster. 
maybe we should remove the corruption before it spreads. This is perhaps. Yet, for all this talk of corruption and life and death and rebirth, I have not asked about you. You seem an odd sort. Your spark um, has touched many. What is it you would like to know? What is it that you seek? Why do you um, change the world? I seek to remove the suffering of the people. In whatever form that takes. Ah, uh, mortal suffering. Yes, it would be best if such suffering could be reduced, but sometimes suffering is inevitable. Better to embrace this life for what it is, with all the pains and joy it offers. If there is pain and joy, that is reasonable, but it appears to only be pain at the moment. Mm, I She'll stop and contemplate this, maybe look around the room. She might connect her eyes with the, the rest of you if you're waiting around. I assume you guys are trying to keep yourselves from looking like a party here? Yeah. I assume they're trying to distance themselves as much as possible from me now that I'm doing things they don't approve of. Hmm. That's it. I think we would probably be staring at the lake, but like from like a different side of the room, probably. Sure. He might be intently staring at perhaps a moat that represents his own life. Hmm. Sorry, were you saying something, Slim? Oh, I said I never went in the, into the temple. Okay, you made a point to stay outside. Yeah. I don't deal with the religious. Hmm. That's a reasonable perspective. How about for Leonidas? I can't really blame him. We'll yeah, I it. would. Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, I'm probably just gonna. I I'm gonna listen in, but I'm obviously not gonna join in that conversation. Probably just gonna be praying in my own way, um, somewhere mm -hmm. to the distance, maybe making a small talk in, while putting a half ear at ever ever. Okay. So um, Benji Long will ultimately agree with Eridavar that. Um, there is much suffering, even in this temple. So many asking for their lives to come to an end, with the faint hope that they'll have find more joy in their next. She says, uh, I suspect that they would find the most joy by returning to the old ways, by moving away from these epicenters of corruption and disease, returning to the natural world and that way of life where they live in harmony with the land and its creatures. What do you think it would take to restore that balance? She stops and thinks for a moment. She says, it seems that whoever wins this war will see themselves in a new position of power to command authority over the people and potentially to wage more wars and cause more suffering. But I have, uh, but I wonder if the new ruler could be persuaded to support a different way of life for its people, to guide them in this return to nature. 